Welcome back. We're gonna do addition of forces and vectors today. In fact, this is gonna be a quick one. There isn't really much for me to do in the way of um, explaining how this equipment works. Um, in fact, the procedure is like this one little paragraph. So we are going to get started and knock this out in 10 minutes. All right, see you in a minute. Before we get started, a quick word. This needs to be, or should be, uh, perfectly horizontal, should be level. If you were to walk into your lab, you'd be provided with these low levels. I don't know if anyone ever uses them, but um, it should be verified that it is level. And when I put this level on this, it wasn't, it was lopsided. So what I did was I put this at different angles and found that in some orientations, it, it was slope. So messed around with these feet, moved it around, messed with the feet. Wherever I put this level, it's perfectly horizontal, dead on, we're good. So here's an overhead view of our force table. This ring here is the mass of interest. And um, of course, we did not want to arrange the pulleys in such a way that um, they're like at what? 120 degrees, 120 degrees, 120 degrees, like the most symmetrical case there is because that would be pointless. This is the least symmetrical case I could uh, uh, quickly arrange here. So we're gonna start putting weights on. In fact, uh, in the interest of time, I am going to put you on pause and play around with an assortment of weights and see if I could balance this ring. I want to get it right in the center. Okay, so now we're ready to collect the data. I set up the weights or I stack weights on these strings so that uh, that center ring is dead center. Now, by the way, it is pretty centered. If it doesn't look centered on your end, that's just because the camera isn't directly um, over this post there. Uh, by the way, these two strings, you can see that they are almost 180 degrees from each other. If they were 180 degrees, you'd never be able to center that in the middle. The closer they are to 180 degrees, the harder it is to balance. Unless, of course, this string here was right at this angle. It still wouldn't be symmetrical, a symmetrical case where all the strings are 120 degrees from each other, but it's still a symmetrical case and it wouldn't be too difficult to balance. But because this is way over here, um, you have to stack tiny increments of weights and uh, bang on this guy uh, to overcome any frictional forces in the pulley. Maybe you overshot the mark a bit and different combinations and, and, and uh, re-tapping. Anyway, it took a while, but here we go. We're finally there. And um, uh, I, I think I mentioned this. I, I, although this configuration was a little harder to balance, I did choose it so that um, we could deviate from symmetry as much as possible. So... All we need now is to determine the weights on the hooks. So let me get rid of this table and get our scale out and I'll put you on pause. Okay, so I said I wasn't gonna talk too much and just uh, do the procedure, but as a side note, why does that ring have to be dead center in order for us to uh, calculate the net forces on it? I mean. If it wasn't centered, it's still not moving. Its acceleration is still zero. The sum of the forces on that ring are still zero. Uh, but notice, if it's not dead centered, there's no way to uh, add these tensions together because we don't know what their actual angles are. The center, the table is constructed in such a way, logically, that the origin is dead center. So we know precisely what these angles are. I mean, this post could have been right here, 
and they could have shifted the origin. So all these angles would correspond to the origin here where the post is, and this still would have to be dead center, the ring dead center on that post to get correct reading. So hey, you know, of course it's gonna be put in the middle. But anyway, let's get those masses. But before we get those masses, we need three sets of data obtained from this table, and that simply is at what angles are these strings. So uh, this one right here, we'll label this uh, F1 for force one. That is at zero degrees, 0, 0.0 degrees. Our next force, say F2, we'll call it this one here, that is at 151.0 degrees, 151.0. By the way, the 0, 0.0, because I preset them, um, I chose this configuration. So I was, I was able to get it right dead on a tick mark. And um, it's 151 just to make it more interesting. I don't want to make it 150. This one here is F3. And F3 is located at uh, 316.0, 316.0 degrees. Now, let's get those masses. So usually what I see students doing is just simply uh, counting the uh, weights that are stacked on those hooks and um, adding up the numerical values and printed on the weights. We'll do something a little uh, more accurate. We'll just go ahead and weigh them. Actually, this hook is probably gonna be dead on. And I'm taking off the these little labels because those will uh, register on the scale. Not by much, but it would. So this is F1, and I don't know how well you can see the display here, but it is 50.05 grams. So that was F1. Now, the hook attached to the string that we called F2 is 134.88 grams. F3, 93.5 grams. Ladies and gentlemen, that was it. That concludes uh, this week's lab. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.